Hey you guys, it's Bria tonight. We're here to continue my coverage of the eight passengers situation. Ruby, Frankie, Kevin, Frankie, Jody, Hildebrand, and kind of everything that has been unfolding very rapidly since this new evidence has been released. As a reminder, I will not be showing any of the um, children on my channel, but I do want to talk about Ruby's journal entries. And I also want to also cover Kevin's interview in this video. So it might be a long one, but we're going to go over both of those things in this video. So if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys. So first we're going to go over the journal entries and a lot of this is redacted for obvious reasons and the um, her children's names have been identified with just a letter. So that is what is going to be happening here. Large parts of this redacted and I'm glad that it is redacted because I have no right to see every single thing that, um, you know, is in these documents. But I do wonder, this is already so bad. It's the worst of the worst. It's awful. It's just heartbreaking and devastating. And to think that there are things that are worse than what we already know that have been redacted from these journal entries to me is extremely, extremely frightening. So let's start at the top. Jody receives, this is on May 21st of 2023. Jody receives blessing from Temple President Steve Kaplan. Steve Kaplan should be under investigation. Let's start right there. So what was the blessing for? What was the conversation? What did he know that was going on in Jody's home and what the plan was for she and Ruby to do any of the horrific things that they did. What were those conversations and what was the blessing? I want to know. Ruby, A, J, R, and E come down to Jody's to help spring clean. That's on May 22nd, 23. June 13th, Jody goes to SLC to meet with Jeremy Juggy and Brad Wilcox. Who are those people? Let's Google. Jeremy Jaggy. So he's a general authority 70 at the church. He was an elder. So all of these people need to be under investigation. And Brad Wilcox, same applies to him. June 30th, 23. R refuses to do wall sits. He says he is done. July 1st. Same child is still told to stay outside sleep outside. Only come in to use the bathroom and the shower. E refuses to work, screams, has her hair shaved off. That's all on July 14th. July, looks like July 15th. R runs away around 1.15 a.m. Ruby finds him around 3 a.m. Jody E. J. drive to Arizona to find property and land. Now that was a piece of information that I didn't know about until now, um, or the last you know day or so, is that Ruby and Jody were actually looking to buy a ranch in Arizona, and they were going to take these two children to Arizona so that they could do more physical labor, and spend more time outside, and. still be treated the same way. Restrained, not fed, no water. When the children would brush their teeth, they would cut the water off because that's how the kids would sneak water, according to Jody and Ruby. They would be supervised when they were in the shower to make sure that they were not drinking the shower water. July 9th, 2023. Our turns 12 tomorrow. I never envisioned him being 12. Satanic choices lead one to becoming destitute. 
even in the most affluential homes. July 10th, it's R's birthday and he doesn't even know what month it is. E and R have been in so much deviant behavior. They are both furious. Their selfish, sinful lifestyle is being intervened upon. I told R he emulates a snake. He slithers and sneaks around looking for opportunities when no one is watching. And then he scurries. If he wants to emulate the savior, he needs to be 100% obedient with exactness. No wavering, no hiding. <clears throat> Can you imagine your mother saying these things to you while also in conjunction physically abusing you and withholding food while also letting this monstrous bitch named Jody also do the same to you. The two adults in that situation not only didn't save those kids, but they were trying to end those kids. How do you ever trust anyone again when you go through that as a child? How do you trust anyone that you come in contact with? Our lies, I mean all the time. He is a compulsive liar. This experience is a shock to his system. He has a cold, dead heart. He's always been able to get what he wants. And now that he can't, he is furious. I told him if he divulged everything, he would automatically begin repenting. See, this is why when I hear the word repent, I hate it. I've hated it for such a long time because usually repenting is used by extremists. And it's got nothing to do with love or forgiveness or anything positive. Repenting is used by extremists and it is one of those words that I've always had an issue with when I hear it. I told R that he needs to find God. I invited him to fast and pray. R is in and out of possession. He is workable and calm for a bit, then angry and defiant the next. The only consistent thing about R is that he lies. E is better behaved with Jody. She likes to think she can still manipulate me. I gave her a pixie haircut. All her long hair is gone. No more distracting with hair. R told me he would rather have a glass of water than me as his mother. Can you blame him? Why is it, why is that even in here? You know, all that this journal does is it's another confirmation that Ruby knew exactly what she was doing. This was all planned. She did not feel bad. She felt bad that she got caught. She did not feel bad that she was literally killing her children. This entry is from July 11th. Big day for evil. E manipulates me. She won't scream when Jody is around, but with me, she wails. At night, she screamed and cried and would hit her head on the floor. Today, Jody confronted her. E admits to putting on a show for her mother. E says she wants to be pitiful. R was told to stand in the sun with his sun hat. He is defiant. No. I tell him a couple more times. R, or I should say, his demon stays in the shade. I push R into the sun. R comes back. I come back with a cactus poker. When I poke his back to get in the sun, R doesn't even flinch. I poke him on the neck. He is in a trance and doesn't appear to feel anything. And then I guess it says Jody tried to wake him up because he fell asleep. Like... I don't, I don't understand how anyone could do this to anyone else. And this is Ruby. 
the person who wanted to sit on social media for years and give out parenting advice and tell other parents what to do with their children and made millions of dollars by doing so. The devil doesn't like when you get your subject to anger to truth. Her handwriting's kind of hard to read some of this. Or do you know that I love you? Yes, ma'am. Do you know Gijo loves you? And Gijo is Jody. So I guess that they were Ruby kind of put her in like a grandma role, and that's why it's called Gijo in this journal. Do you know the survivor loves you? Yes, ma'am. R wants out of his incomes. R wants out of his outcomes. After our talk, R stays in the shade. I take my old mop water and go to R. I show R the water, then I pour the water on R. It's hot outside. It feels good, doesn't it? Yes. Dirty mop water is what Ruby Frankie's children were worth when they were out in the scalding sun doing manual labor, trying to escape an abusive situation by appeasing these two monstrous, monstrous individuals who were controlling the situation. And she dumps dirty mop water on her child. When I said several months ago, Ruby and Jody deserve to be put under the jail, this is why. I knew that I knew the little sob story of her being manipulated by Jody. I knew that that was just a it was just another way for her to try to manipulate the few people who might be willing to weirdly enough listen to her. An hour later, Gijo takes R on a little walk to the pool. She talks how love is twisted. Gijo pushed R into the pool. R swam to the side. Gijo pulled him out. Feels good, refreshing? Yes, ma'am. I went out a couple hours later and asked if he wanted to, if he wanted to go in the pool again. Yes, ma'am. Will you let me push you in? R laughed and then tried to not act too excited. R cooled off and went back to his spot. I put my hands on his face. R, have you ever heard someone talk underwater? Yes, ma'am. I know R is in there somewhere. I know down under all of it, this anger, you can hear me. It may sound like I'm underwater with you, but hear me, I love you. R got teary. This is a thing like, this is manipulation. This is a piece. Simply what Ruby is explaining right here in this interaction, this is abusive and this is manipulative, but she wants to call her own children's bonds of Satan and, um, you know, say that they're the ones being devious. It's really just beyond comprehension of what any sane person can really comprehend. Then I put my hand tightly over his nose and mouth. I am coming to you in this water and putting my hands on your mouth. The devil lies and says I'm hurting you, abusing you, but R, what am I really doing? You are putting anger on me to help me breathe. That's right. R is compulsive. He feels no remorse for his choices. He shuts down and he says he wants to go to jail because jail would be better than what he was going through at Ruby and Jody's house. Point blank period. Imagine jail being a more ideal situation than living with your mother. That right there says a lot. R did know yesterday it was his birthday. E told me she figures she had been here eight weeks. I asked E if she felt like she had made progress over eight weeks. Yes, I told her she was delusional. She has made no progress. She continues to lie and manipulate. Last night, her screaming and France headbanging were evidence of no change. July 12th, took the kids on a four-hour car ride. We stopped at Gunlock Lake, and I shared my love for them. 
We watched a baby cow get loose and walked in the road in front of us. I bought a volcano pie, told the kids the pie was to thank Jijo for her home care time. R appeared enraged. E was manipulative. This was the day E anticipates breaking her two-day fast. All day, E makes rhymes. My mom stars me and calls it fasting. My mom won't lift a finger and bring me food because all she does is lie on the bed and eat brownies. I kept, I cut more off E's head. We doused her with water in the dog wash. E said she wanted to run away. Just a lot of the things that she says about her kids in this journal. Obviously, I'm not reading every single word, but to, to think that somebody could look at children in this way. Oppositional force is required for growth, development, and maturity. E and R have never experienced oppositional force. They are very weak-minded. She talks a lot about religion in this journal. It's just, it's really weirdo kind of stuff. Having her child sleep on the hard ground. Back on June 14th, she wrote, E woke up. I reminded her that if she whined, cried, or squinted her eyes at me or soured her face, I would be buzzing her hair. If she is going to act sick, she can look sick. She agreed with a smile. I told her because she didn't listen the night before, she would do two sets of boxes, stairs with a five-minute break. She did at the first set and easily, easily and agreeably. After five minutes, she began whimpering. When she got to the bottom stair, she slipped and dropped the box. I put her in the dog wash and shaved her head. Then back to the boxes. He agreed to sit on the park bench and think about her choices. I made it very clear that if she were to move, get up, get up fidget, talk, or take her hat off, she would go back to work. She agreed eagerly. She promised to be obedient. After an hour on the bench... She began moving and looking around. I pulled her to the house and gave her more boxes. On the same day, she wrote that she will not feed a demon. I will not feed R. I will not feed a demon. So I will check on you in a bit. And if you want food to be prepared, then tell the truth about your behaviors. I bring him dinner of brown rice, beans, lentils, and water. He takes the bowl and begins eating. I say, no, thank you. Are you going to acknowledge the woman that you've been abusing that just brought you dinner? When I reached down and grabbed his dinner and water, he and said, wow, I will not talk with a demon. Your soul is damned and I will not hear your damnable words. On the 23rd, she wrote, the good works need to be painful, otherwise the service becomes another feel-good distraction. A day of fasting and prayer for me after learning my children have been spawns of Satan. R has been out of control. She says some other stuff. I'm not going to repeat that. Crying, wailing. You could not know what this has been like unless you were here. Jody and I took E out to the desert. She refused to stay quiet and would scream and scream. Jody found a reservation cemetery. She went out in the heat, barefoot. E trails, still tried to run. She screamed for another family, water, food, care, love. A manipulative ploy. <laughs> we took E and R the next day, barefoot, to increase discomfort and de decrease the running away. The task at hand was to weed the cemetery. This is the same cemetery that they found the day before. Huge, huge sagebrush, pokies, thorns, broken glass, garbages over full. We spent a couple of hours filling black bags. The kids began to mellow out a bit. We went the next day, five hours of weed pulling. This is like, these are environments that you would not want to anyone to be exposed to barefoot and out there in, in the Utah summer doing manual labor. Um, 
broken glass and garbage and pokies and all of that kind of stuff like that's an environment that I wouldn't take my dog into and she made her children go out there no no nothing no protection no just an entry in August right before they were raided says R becomes aggressive and destructive he started banging and hitting doors I went in and kicked him knock this off R continues to be destructive and I put on a pair of boots. I went in and I kicked him again. You want me to stop? What are you getting from Satan when he tells you to kick the door, huh? Nothing but more pain. Poking, pouring cold water, towel whip. He seems to give me more attention after the whipping. She sweeped the garage with some good muscle and mopped it. She did a good job. So this is just, um, I think that I've heard enough regarding the, the journal entries because as you can see, it is just simply beyond belief. It is beyond belief that this went on for so long. All right, guys, so I might skip around in this interview a little bit. It is 45 minutes long, and I don't think that all 45 minutes is reaction worthy, and I want to be aware of your all's time as well. So if you want to watch it in its entirety, please visit the link in the description box. But we're going to start around the two-minute mark when he um, gets into the fact that he has not seen his children for over a year. Please keep in mind that my common kind of stance with Kevin was him neglecting his parental responsibility with his children being with Ruby and Jody. It comes down to an obligation. It comes down to a responsibility that he decided to abandon. And that is why I don't see a father who was shut out and should have sorrow, I see a father who neglected his role as dad, as a father. I can't remember some old teenagers to adults. So are they all living with you or? No, I haven't seen them for over a year. Any of them? No, none of them. For a year? Over a year. Okay, I've so. been in a separation. From who? From my wife and family. What's your wife's name? Ruby. Ruby. When was the last time I saw Ruby? The last time I saw her yeah. was um, the 18th of. of this month. We met to, she requested me to sign over vehicles, for the titles to the vehicles, the vehicle that she drives were all in my name. When was the last time you physically saw her? Um, the day that I moved out, July 24th, 2022. 24th of so he goes a full year without seeing his kids, but he sees Ruby. And for me, I, I really struggle with that because I just don't think that any normal parent who now is saying that they're fighting for custody and they care so much and oh my gosh, and this is just, you know, tough on me as a dad. Um, Kevin, you dropped the ball. And then once all of this was coming out, what did he want to do? He wanted to press charges on his adult daughter, Sherry, for breaking and entering because she was taking um, things that he wanted and wanted to press charge. Like, I've covered all that too, but his actions have not shown that he is a caring individual who was shut out and manipulated by Jody. Of 2022. Or July 25th, July 25th. So it's my understanding that, that at least home here in, in K and 10 Ivans. Have you been to that home? No. You've not been to that home? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know what's anything that's been going on. Like, this is good, man. Like, I would love to be able to help you out with this. And, like, I'm seeing the light of being in because I'm unaware of your involvement in, in what's really going on. So for you to say that you're unaware of the status of your kids kind of makes, I know that sounds kind of crummy to you, but it sounds kind of good to me. Like, who lives in that home with your 
Is it ex-wife? Is it currently a separated wife? Like who lives in that home with your children? To be honest, I don't know. I, I know that she's there with um, four of the children and our two older children have moved out. They're, they're not at your home in Springville? Uh, and I'm not trying to trip you up. I can see you're hesitant to talk to me. I understand that. Well, where, where I live? No, yeah. I haven't seen them for over a year. Okay. That's tough. I can only imagine how that feels when I got kids. And not seen them for that long. That, that would tear a piece of my heart out. You would think that most parents, whether it was a mother or a father, doesn't matter. If you have not seen your kids for an extended period of time, most parents would be breaking down the door to wherever those kids were and saying, I'm here and I want to see my kids. And if you want to try to stonewall me like you did the police officers, Ruby, then, you know, we're, we're going to have to just get authorities involved. Think if Kevin would have stepped into action nine months before or even 11 months. He goes 30 days without seeing his kids and he automatically has law enforcement involved and Ruby has law enforcement to answer to. Think about all of that damage that she was able to do would have not happened because Kevin was fulfilling his obligations as a father. Of age to drive. Does she drive? I don't know. Okay. Like I said, I don't. I don't know nothing is going on so, in their lives or anything going on. How did you find out that you needed to come here to 55 North Main Street? I received a message that I needed to come pick up my kids from the police department in Highlands. And who was that message from? Uh, well, I prefer not to say it right now. It would just help us a lot. I'll try to figure out who reached out to you because it makes sense that that would happen. I'm just not aware of anyone who did that from her department. Right. And, and I'm not comfortable saying right now who reached out to me. Okay. Okay. So, you haven't seen any of the kids in over a year, you said? That's correct. And then, what the last time you saw her? So he won't tell the police officers who he received the message from. Hmm. Do you think that maybe it was Ruby? You think that maybe it was Ruby since she was allowed to still have access to her phone when she was sitting in the comfy couch of Jody's house with these officers. Do you think that maybe she quickly took a second and a half to tell Kevin what was going on? Do you think that that is a possibility? Because the officers are saying it wasn't anyone in our department that did that. And he, kind of like Ruby, is stonewalling them and just not willing to give them, like, now is the time to be transparent. You already dropped the ball and failed as a father. So now's the time to, if, if you say you care, then let's actually show that you care. But so far, I have not seen a, a dad that is shocked and in horror and disbelief that he's sitting in a police station still not knowing what's going on with his children. Okay, how old is she now? 15. She's 16. Okay. And then when all the kids left, Ruby took all of them? Um, yeah, she stayed in the house and I moved up. Okay. And did you ever try to reach out to the kids, drop by the home, or no. was there? I honored the no separation boundary that we agreed to. So what was no your separation? Contact, excuse me. Did you have a no contact order in place? Order? No, this was between my wife and I. So what did Ruby ask of you when you separated? What did she ask of me? Did she ask you not to contact the kids? Ruby invited me to leave the home mm -hmm. while I um, thought about the, the choices that I've made in my life and the way that I treated her. Okay. And so I left. And how long had you and Ruby been married before? We were married in 2000. So about 22 years? Uh, when we separated, we were going on 22 years. Yes. Okay. And during your marriage, how was, how was disciplining your kids? How would you discipline your kids? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, that's fine. No. Have, have you been since separated or since they lived here in the city of Ivins? Um, have you communicated with... We would withhold food and we would send kids to places like Anastasi. And then we would defend our decision to our YouTube audience. And we would upload vlogs of Ruby refusing to feed children, refusing to bring her kids lunch when they were responsible at five years old to pack their own lunch. We've gone over all of their problematic nonsense that was uploaded onto YouTube. And that's only the stuff that was uploaded onto YouTube. Think of all of the bad things that Kevin was eyewitness to and fully involved in 
that we just don't know about. Your wife regarding like discipline with your kids or their care or their physical well-being? No. So is she doing this on her own, just telling you how your kids are? She's not telling anything about the kids. Mm -hmm. Who's this, who's this uh, female Jody that your wife lives with? Do you, do you know a female named Jody? So she's not telling him anything about the kids. He's not asking, how are the kids? He's not asking, are the kids alive? Uh, are the kids still in one piece? What's going on? Um, she's not saying anything and he's not asking. That tells me that there are two terrible parents in this situation. May God help these children who had Ruby and Kevin as their parents. She is a a therapist and a life coach, I know. And she's... Do you respect her? Uh, do I respect her? Yeah, I think she is a very honest, truthful person, yes. Okay. You place value on Jody? I don't know what that means. But do you, do you, do you value what she says and, and how she treats is your wife a client of hers? Is your wife a partner of hers? Is your wife a roommate with her? If your kids are living in her house, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not aware of that, but I know that they've been in business for the last year filming... Who's they? So he is trying to say that he didn't even know that his kids and Ruby were residing with Jody. So you literally just left your house and that was it. That's wild. And you want to call yourself a father? You walked out of your home, leaving your children behind and just that's it? what you respond to a text when Ruby decides to reach out, like what a spineless sucker. The podcast goes up and I listen to it. <laughs> What's the name of it? Uh, connections with an X. Like C-O-N. C-O-N-N-E-X-I-O-N-S. Yeah. And now like, do you support them in that role in doing that and having... Do I support them in the business? Yeah, like you, do you support them and think that what they're doing is a good thing or... Yeah, I support their business efforts. I think it's a good thing. Are you involved with their business efforts, or no? Okay. So just Ruby and Jody. Okay. In the business. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And were you involved in the Eight Passengers account with your family? Um, yes. I was in the videos. I think that's what you mean. I briefly learned about this two hours ago. <laughs> so did Ruby more so do the videos for the family? Mm -hmm. And how long did you guys do that for? Uh, she started the channel in 2015. And as far as, as I'm aware, from the time I left, the last video she uploaded was towards the end of 2021. Okay. And I, but again, I'm not aware of anything she's done since our separation. I don't visit eight passengers anymore. <laughs> chapter of your life that's gone? It, it, it's a past chapter, yeah. So how do you... He was fully involved in the production of those videos. Don't sit there and act like you're just some kind of oh, I would pop into a video here and there. Kevin, on numerous occasions, got on video right next to Ruby and literally defended their decisions as parents, which we know was complete mis mishandling of situations with children. Numerous times, he sat there and defended it. So let's not act as if you're the one who once a month or so you might be in a vlog clip or pop your head in and say hi. Um, Kevin, Kevin is not a good person. Communicate just through text, phone call. Through text and if there's anything considered an emergency, we agree to communicate through a phone call. Okay. And do you know her phone number off the top of your head? Off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. No worries. So, how often would you guys communicate while she was down here? Well, I don't know how often. Or... He doesn't know his wife of 22 years, her phone number. That's a little bizarre. But here's the thing. So you're expecting a call from Ruby if there is an emergency, but if you are not checking in or doing anything to make sure that your children are safe, uh, that's a lot of trust to put into Ruby when you have no clue if your kids are even dead or alive. Shame on you, Kevin. Mom, she was down here. We've communicated maybe four times in 2023 since January. So are you aware of how she disciplines the kids or how she handles no. the kids with behavioral issues or anything like that? No. So you're unaware of how she does that? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of the physical condition of your children? 
No. No, I'm, I chose not to trust my wife with the children. That was part of the agreement of our separation. Is that you allow her to physically... Pray. So let's talk about that for a second, because he absolutely did know about Ruby and her problematic parenting style for years. Now, he can say that for this year leading up to their arrest, he was out of the picture, if that's the boat that he's willing to, you know, die on. For, for many years, he saw Ruby uploading public content of her parenting style like i said many of many times he defended it um on video with her and that that is a problem because you can't just say that you don't know what your wife was doing you don't know her parenting style you don't know what kind of discipline she would um bring into the equation you are not a clueless bystander. You are their father and you lived in the same house with her. So you didn't know anything, even though you were in videos and you defended so many horrible decisions on video next to Ruby. Like, miss me with the I didn't know what was going on bullshit. For the needs of the child, just removed from that. I know this is personal questions, but. Yes, my job is to financially provide. I'm just trying to figure out how, how much of a role do you play in the caretaking of specifically of, of those two kids? I I pay the bills. Okay. With my, my job, I provide the money, goes into a shared bank account, and that's my only involvement. Okay. Um, like there's a whole bunch of things I want to talk to you about, but I, I still can't get over the fact that someone notified you to come here to pick up your kids. My guess is, was that was that uh, Jody? No, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. All, all I'll say is... Well, you, you said you trusted her. You said that you think that she's... Not as, I asked you if you place value on her, but you, you obviously... She is an honest... I know her to be an honest and a trustworthy individual. And so, yeah, I trust her. And um, I received a communication that... And so I left immediately from my job and drove down here. That's all I know. I've come to pick up my kids. And to take them home with me. Yeah, if there's custodial paperwork that says that you're like a, there's, there's no custodial paperwork denied. So he's still saying that Ruby and Jody are, or uh, that Jody is honest and trustworthy, but you didn't really know her. So how are you putting so much trust on somebody that you didn't really interact with very much? You said that you never went to her house. You don't really know a whole lot of anything that was going on. So how are you willing to put so much trust? Here's the thing. I'm not going to put trust into somebody that I barely interact with. That is foolish nonsense, especially if they are interacting with my children on a normal basis. That is just stupid. You might as well say that the guy that drives the white van with free candy on the side of the road, you're putting trust into that person. It's stupid. You don't know them. You, by your own admission, were not around. So what's the truth, Kevin? No rights, correct? Uh, there's no custodial paperwork at all. Period. This, this so the kids are yours? They are mine. Okay. okay. Yes. We, this was not just a verbal agreement between my wife and I when we said mm -hmm. last year. Well, what questions do you have? Oh, I want to know what's going on and why I was asked to come down and pick up my two kids. Well, and no. a lot of that kind of hinges on who asked you, because if we had been the one, like, I'm, I'm not going to say you fit, but I'm, I'm confident a cop didn't call you because we wouldn't want to be down here at this point in our investigation. So, having said that, I, I think it's time we'd be honest with you, right? Sure. No, and, and I didn't lie. You're sure, okay. Someone contacted me, but I don't want you to say what I was. from your office, but okay. Uh, well, I don't recall saying something from my office. Our office. Like, no. no. Someone, yeah, so we don't know who called you. So right. if we knew who called you, then we could help you. It would make more sense. But. Well, I don't know the legal ramifications of implicating the individuals who contacted me. And so without a lawyer here, I don't want to answer that question. That's okay. But you're, you want to know specifics of the case, which we can't share right now because it's under investigation. So. I see. Yeah. So we would like to ask questions about where you found out, but we'll respect that if you don't want to share that information. But I am curious, when you guys had the previous Eight Passengers YouTube channel, you guys got a lot of heat for neglect and child abuse. A lot of people commented those things on there. Why were they commenting those things? That's a good question. Um, we uh, we had a son who was acting out in very selfish behavior.
And you know, none of this is strange or odd. You can get on YouTube and find out all sorts of stuff on this. It's like a double-edged sword. Yeah, it's the question is, what do you believe, right? There, yeah. there was even an article written in um, Newsweek magazine in 2020 on it. And, or News, was it Newsweek? No, Business Insider, where we were interviewed. And we were pretty straightforward and we talked about it and we shared our piece in that. Basically, it boils down to he was being um, very cruel and mean to his siblings that he shared a room with. And so we removed him from the room. He's still standing on that hill that Chad, who is now a legal adult, which is why I'm using his name, that Chad was uh, being selfish and being problematic. He's still, even after all of this time, still calling that child who pranked his little brother, which is a total big brother, little brother thing to do. He's still claiming that that was the right decision and that him sleeping on a bean bag was a choice. No, that was the only option given to him by you and Ruby. And then you send him off to Anastasi. And that's been a whole nother conversation that I have had in detail. I'm not going to dive into that because this video is already going to be super long. But we have seen the evidence that those camps are not good for what what parents call troubled teens which a lot of times it's just teenagers growing up going through a different set of emotions and trying to figure out who they are and maybe making some lapses in judgment along the way they get shipped off to these camps and it is not ever really a super positive outcome for these kids and we said you can sleep anywhere you want. Sleep on the couch, sleep on the pull-out bed, sleep on the floor for all we care, but you're not sleeping in that room with your brother. Uh, he chose to sleep on a beanbag. So nine months later, he had made a lot of changes in his life, and he was ready to... And he's not bringing up the Anastasi thing. He's not bringing up the um, Ruby threatening to cut off heads of toys, not giving her kids Christmas, withholding food, uh, hoping that teachers at school would not feed her child when her child um, forgot to pack her own lunch, even though she was literally five years old. Um, so he, he is withholding tons of information as to why the eight passengers channel was under so much uh, scrutiny and backlash for the years that they were active online. And we had moved by that time. And so we had a new house and he was ready to move into his own bedroom, made a video about it. And in the video, he mentioned something to the effect of, I've been sleeping for nine months on a beanbag. That is what all the uproar was about. What did you guys do to help, like, with his behavioral issues? Is that, is that something you and Ruby talked about together? Is, mm -hmm. And then did you... Mm -hmm. ...helping you discover yourself and fix behavioral issues and things like that? Is that, is that something you and Ruby sought out to help? And, okay. And I supported it. And so together we held boundaries for ourselves to support his choosing honest and responsible choices. And when he chose honest and responsible choices consistently is when he began to get his privileges back. And that was, that was, that was the other word, right? Yeah. And, and so, um, but yes, um, through 2000, contact with him because I'm honoring the most contact separation boundary with, uh, that I agreed to with my wife. But I understand that he's um, 18, living on his own somewhere in Provo and working and supporting himself. What I mean, you can find on Amazon. It's not a secret. Um, was business thriving, like life was good between those two? Uh, well, not that I was aware. Well, at some point, and again, I'm not digging into your life, but I'm trying to understand this at some point. We took, kick you out? When you talk about a business you know, thriving uh -huh. in terms of business and money, when, when we stopped eight passengers on YouTube, we lost 90% of our income. So Ooh. we said that business was thriving. Uh, in my perspective, no. Got it. I don't think it ever was. And that goes to prove when these family vloggers put their kids onto social media, that is their income. And when they take the kids off of the channel, the, the channel is going to tank because the people are parasocially connected to their kids. That's why we don't see parents, um, you know, unless they're wackadoodle crazy like uh, Ruby is. She decided to do it because she wanted to get into all of this mess. But when when family vloggers try to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, we could still make content, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, people care about your kids. They don't care about y'all because y'all are boring and people 
weirdos like to watch kids grow up on the internet. So I find that to be very interesting. 90% of their income uh, did go away, do, did go away. And um, my God, I mean, they made a fortune by exploiting their kids and putting their use on Front Street for all those years. And um, they, they have nothing to show for it at this point. Was, was that part of your guys' reason for separation after you guys ended eight passengers? Uh, was that part of the reason? Uh, the, the reasons are because of, of ways that I treated my wife. And, um, and some um, of my own addictions that I was working through and seeking help on with, um, with uh, pornography. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so Kevin was addicted to porn, and that's why Ruby decided to shut down eight passengers. That doesn't make any sense to me. I find it um, interesting, and this is this has been covered in detail by many other people much smarter than I am, but there is a tie between these extreme religious organizations and um, having issues with pornography. There has been a tie that has been associated with those two. And I do find that to be a, a little bit of a common thread with these extreme religious organizations. But um, I, I don't think that that's why Eight Passengers stopped. I think that Ruby decided to dive headfirst into what became much more of a personal relationship with Jody, And Kevin decided to just wash his hands of his parental um, obligations to make sure that his kids were okay during all of this. And I, yeah, I've made some wonderful progress. Oh, is that something you came to the realization that you needed help and weren't doing things right? Or is that something that, like, Jody helped you guys recognize that maybe Ruby needed more? I'm trying to understand her involvement in your guys' life. Um, She's not focused, so just to be honest. I understand and I, I can perceive that. Um, Jody and Ruby have a, um, a close relationship and, and Jody saw the need for me to get help. And um, frankly, I agree. I, the space um, has been exactly what I need to face you know, my own um, addictions and, and receive the support and help that I've needed. And so the space has been um, very, very good for me. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, stated that you and Ruby had this no contact that you guys just verbally agreed upon, was that an idea given by Jody that she recommended you guys have that space and not contact one another? I'm not aware of that. It, the, the invitation for me to leave and take space was from my wife. But that was wild Jody. So as far as him saying that this space is what I needed and I've made wonderful progress, that's all fine, whatever. But what Kevin is failing to acknowledge is that he still failed as a parent because there are tons of couples who get into hard times and they do a separation, whether it's a trial separation or something more permanent. Um, but both of those parents are still fully involved in their, in their children's lives because you getting separated is not the fault of your children or your child. And they still need both parents active and involved. Um, even if it's not every single day, most parents that care about their kids and love their kids don't just walk away because their wife told them to and then they get into this space where they literally have no clue what's going on with their kids. We and Ruby were friends and collaborating and doing podcasts and sure. Well, you're the, you're the custodial parent of the show. I don't see why we can't explain to you what, why we're involved. So I don't recall the exact time, but sometime before 11 o'clock today, we received a phone call from 911 on our dispatch that uh, a 12 to 13 year old boy was knocking on doors in the neighborhood asking for food and water, that he was severely emaciated, that he had what is emaciated? skinny, scrawny, uh, malnutritioned, not enough food, not enough water to sustain life. So he had, I'm sorry, what? He had duct tape on his extremities, on his hands, on his ankles, and those were covering rope burns that were used to tie him down. Take a second and think about what I just said. That's the condition of your son. Given that information, your son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted 
by the Department of Child and Family Services to remove both from your wife's care. So no one right now is going to have access to these two children based on their physical condition. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you, would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, That's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of treatment of these, these based precious on children. No. Kevin, you jackass, you don't need to know the details. Your children were almost dead. Those are the details you need to know. They had wounds on them caused by Ruby and Jody. Those are the details you need to know. You don't need any other description aside from your children were literally days or weeks away from death. And he is rubbing his head and doing this like, this is enraging. But again, I don't know the details or I don't know what's going on, but as you described that, that sounds... Horrible, horrible, disgusting. No human being should be treated like that. I, yeah, okay. That's my thoughts, but again, we might be different on that. Uh, We're gonna like sit here for a second, okay? We're gonna go out and talk. Um, I'm not saying you're you're still not free to go. Are you under arrest? Absolutely not. We just have lots of questions we need to figure out. Lots. Okay. Uh, okay. Because your, your children are under medical care right now. And what does that mean? It means that you don't have access to them. My understanding is that they are, what is that? They're in the custody of DCFS. And they will be for the next seven. There's a medical hold on them right now. So for at least the next 72 hours. Okay, so Kevin just kind of sits there with his hands on his head for a while. And then they come back in. So let's get to that part of the interview. What's going to happen with my wife? I love my wife. I don't know. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I haven't had any of you. I don't know if against my wife. Possibly. I think given the circumstances, that's highly appropriate, but again, I don't know your wife. I was hoping to gain some insight from you, but I don't necessarily know that that's something you wanted to... I trust her. A road you wanted to travel down with me, so... It's all about legal representation. Yeah, all right. I do. So when they come back in, after he has had some time to himself, and after hearing that his children were in the condition that they were in, he is still saying, I love my wife and I trust my wife. That tells you everything that you need to know about Kevin. Not, how are my children? Where are my children? When can I see my children? What, what can I do to help my children? None of that. I love my wife. I trust my wife. That is Kevin Frankie. And in my opinion, I think he is twisted just like Ruby is. And I think that's why they were together for 22 years. Obviously in different ways. I should clarify, but I don't think they are. Um, I, I don't think either of them are upstanding citizens of society in any way, shape, or form. But I love my wife. I trust my wife. And so, I mean, this feels like getting run over by a steam truck while you're sharing with me today. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you're caught off guard. I thought I was just coming here to pick up my kids. And for what, I don't know what or why, but... And I was planning on taking them back with me and just... I mean, I'd love to have a candid conversation with you. I just don't know how it's going to be received by you. I don't know you, but I can tell you my perception of how this happened. Uh, well, but, I'm interested. You know, not, it's, look, I'm interested in facts, but mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm, I'm I'm interested in all the facts. But you understand our facts. Our facts are that you have a child that is emaciated, malnutrition, and has and has marks. I, I didn't spend any time with her. Sergeant Tobler did. Did any of you spend time with her? But she didn't spend time with her. I have not. She, I went to, she was requested to go to the hospital along with based on her condition. Folks, I don't know what to do. Like, I want to... S you realize that I have a picture of my family on my wall and I look at it every day and I work. I work every day. Everything you're sharing sounds like a made-up story and wants to talk about a photo that he has on his wall. Where were those emotions, that drive and that dedication to get your family back while you went over a year without seeing or speaking to your children? Boo-hoo, somewhere else, Kevin. Back to my family. Save my family. Everything you're sharing to me just sounds like a made-up story. Like I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, 
this just it sounds like a horror movie. And I get you're all you're all doing your jobs. I get it. I understand. And this is this is my life. I just want my kids. He is riding so hard for Ruby. It is actually very scary to see that even at this point, we're almost done with this interview. There's only a couple minutes left. And even now he is writing for his wife. And that says so much to me. If it comes time for anybody to take their kid's side or their spouse's side, those kids are helpless. And those kids have been and just went through a year of hell at the hands of Ruby and Jody. And you are still sitting here in this room with these law enforcement officers writing for f***ing Ruby. I just want my kids, I just want my family. Why don't, I, don't, have I, don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why these things that you described happen. I, I don't know. It's almost like, I want to say, I'm sorry, you must have somebody else, because it's like, am I in the right conference room here? So anyway, I will link that entire interview down below. I did scrub it just a little bit, but not really. I actually listened to most of it. Um, but that is Kevin Frankie. That is the Kevin Frankie that dropped the ball on being a father. And that is the Kevin Frankie even after his literal wife, Ruby, and Jody Hildebrandt were in police custody. He wanted to say that it sounded like a horror movie and he questioned if he was even in the right conference room at the police office. Like, that is absolutely unhinged and wild behavior to me, personally. I just don't understand it, and I, I can't, um, you know, typically I would say, well, you know, this is awful because it's just awful for, for any parent to have to go through that, but his demeanor and the things that he is still willing to excuse, ignore, and, um, you know, campaign for... Um, tells me exactly what a spineless snake Kevin Frankie is. Um, so either way, I think that's enough for today. This video is probably going to be very long and going to take me ages to edit, but I think that's enough. So if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.